Let's see if this works. Hello, video on demand people. Actually, I should probably let the mods know that we're live. 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 Hello. Hello, boss. Uh, nerd, nerd, nerd. Hey. Twitch mods. Live a little early. Hey, folks. Is there anybody in chat? Is there any? Oh, hello, Samuel. This is the. Um, can I pop chat out? I bet I can. Pop out chat. Thank you. Thank you. There we go. Hello. Hello. Hi. So I thought it'd be a good idea. It's um, not 11 o'clock. So this is not the Arcadia stream. This is the Star Arcadia stream. No. Um, although that would be a good name if we ever do a sci fi RPG um, for its monthly uh, thing. <laughs> I just gave James from Castle a heart attack. Um, so, yeah, I thought since we did a, a running the game video on whatever day that was, days, uh, Monday, uh, rather than just have today be the Arcadia stream, we spent about a half an hour, just me and you folks. Hello, David Rose, Joe Osterstock. It's super cool because normally I'm on Twitch. Twitch! <clears throat> normally I'm on Twitch, but um, here on YouTube, I see people's real names mostly. Barkadia. It's all about dogs. <laughs> so, um, you know, I thought Monday's video was really inter interdasting because, hello, Iceland, Mr. Twisby. Super cool seeing people's real names. Time is inexorable. <laughs> Bjorn. Good time zones. Yes. That's why we do these things at 11 in the, in the morning, except this is... So I only have half an hour with you folks before... Don't tell anybody. Don't tell that we, we're, we're live right now. And it's just you and me. And we only have a little while before it's not going to just be you and me. And it's going to be um, a whole bunch of people talking about Arcadia too. But we did a... Um, live uh, we did a video on Monday about engaging your players and um, it was pretty successful I think in that it definitely worked to get people to think differently about how they structure their adventures and about how they contextualize their lore and that's super important to me um, and you know the one of the comments we got a bunch it wasn't the number one comment I don't think one of the comments we got a bunch was um, that you know this isn't the problem I'm having with engaging my players. My players just don't do anything, period, ever. And um, and I, as I try to express in the video, there's lots of different reasons why you're playing. In fact, originally in the script, I said, you know, there are lots of solutions to this, including, like, you could just kind of like the phrase I use is psycho or the word I use is psychoanalyze your players and figure out what each player at the table is there for uniquely and then custom create content for them to kind of... Um, and I cut all that because it's easy to say, like, it's better to just say, here's a solution. There are lots of solutions and then do future videos to talk about what those other solutions could be. But one of the things that we should probably do another video on because it's been, it's been a while and you know, the, the community of people watching these videos is different. Um, over, it changes over time so that you sort of can't count on most people, uh, to have seen, now there's almost 100 videos, to have seen 100 videos. So it's worth going back to earlier topics and revisiting them. And one of the solutions for my players just don't care about anything at all is the West Marches, right? That's that um, uh, time asynchronous game where the dungeon master does not prep content until the players come up with things they want to do in the world. Oh, I, my, my character wants to go do this, that, and the other thing. Oh, you do? Okay, well, give me a couple of days and I'll generate some content for that. And who do you want to play with and what's your schedule? And, and the players drive it. And I suspect, excuse me, I suspect that because the West Marches is very useful for that, but can also be used and extended to be like a large campaign with multiple dungeon masters and multiple players, you know, 13, 20 different players, because it's, it's asynchronous. It's, we don't all have to get together. We don't all have to play together. I think people, when they watched that first West Marches video, they thought that's the purpose of the West Marches is to run a huge game. And it's like, no, 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 no. That's just a thing you can do with West Marches. But the, the number one reason to do an asynchronous game like that is that way there is no game night, right? Where everyone shows up because they know we play D&D &D on Thursday nights or whatever. And then they just sit, passively sit around and expect you to do all the work. It forces the players to drive things. I'm not going to get any content ready. Uh, if you have an idea of something you want to do in the world, let me know. And I will prep that 
and then we'll schedule it based on your availability and the players that you can co coerce or convince to play with you. And so that's, I think, a big deal. You can show that, Mason. That says. Mostly just to test the boundaries. Yeah, I think that's pretty common. How long should campaigns last? About, I don't know, like 50 feet. Um, Joseph, thank you for the uh, uh, Philippine peso. Sometimes I find it tough to enter the imaginary world. Yeah, I get that. Well, it becomes harder as you get older. Um, it just, you know, it's a lot easier. When you're a teenager, it's a lot easier to believe. Anyways, don't, don't interrupt me. <laughs> um... Uh, the, um, the, but so that's, that's a comment I got, right. Was, um, Hey, my players are not engaged for this reason or that reason, but the number one response we got. And for some reason it really made me go, Oh, this is cool because it gives me like, it, it's so rare when I make a video that it seems like most people who watch it have this same response that this is kind of the, uh, an easy, fun opportunity for me to make another video in reaction to the comments, which I normally don't have to do. Normally people just go, yep, I get it, cool. And that comment was, um, isn't this railroading? And that makes me, what I recommend the West Marches for a beginner DM, uh, I don't really think there's anything harder or easier, but it's just a different way of doing things. And in fact, I think that um, for a lot of DMs in the 1970s, and the early 1980s. I don't know why I said it like that. Early. Um, like I'm a seal. Er, bleh, bleh. Hey, did this just get started? No, Tristan, we've been streaming for days. I love your content. Facundo. Facundo Minelli. Facundo. Powell. Look at all these people who are probably from other parts of the world besides the West Coast of the United States. That's super cool because it's 11 in the morning. <laughs> Joe Auerbach. Thank you, Joe. Extra, that's, that, means, that, that means Arcadia 2 is a very expensive magazine for you, but I'm glad you got value out of it. Um, what is even time? I know, Vladimir, you're right. Wow, that's, you got a cool name, Vladimir Gavorkov. I think, I don't, don't take this the wrong way, Vladimir, but I think Gavorkov is a, would be a great name for one of my orcs. Um, you know, that's a cool name. Sweden waiting for BlizzCon. Um, thank you for the 1999, not, not 20 bucks, 1999 BOA 249. Thank you for your content. Um, have I ever run the GDQ adventure? No, I played in it. Um, anyway, so yeah, people were like, um, hey, uh, isn't this railroading? And that surprises, that surprised me. And it sort of makes me think, I think railroading has become a shibboleth in our, in our little gaming corner of the world where uh and there's a lot of cargo cult thinking surrounding it where people don't what they know is railroading is bad right and they don't even really i don't know that we have a really sophisticated idea what railroading is you know um railroading is when you say let me give you an example railroading is when you say the villain remember the video right where i said the villain is invincible and the only way you can stop him is the stone of invincibility and it's over here to sit yeah. and railroading is when the players go Hey, wait a minute. Could we do, could, isn't there a, isn't there an elf dude who knows this, that, and the other thing? Couldn't we go talk to him and figure out this, that, and the other thing? And you go, no, even if, even though that might be a good idea, you go, no, there's, it's only the stone of invincibility. I'm ignoring your cool ideas. That's, that's railroading. Railroading is when, even though the players have a good idea, you say no. And players hate that. That's railroading. So, if your players are reacting, if you're trying to chase your players up a tree and they start coming up with alternate solutions, that's good. That's what you want. That's them engaging. That's not railroading. Saying they're the only saying the only way to beat Ajax is with, you know, the stone of invincibility. I almost taught, I almost actually said the only way to beat Ajax, but you're not one of my players and you don't know the answer to that yet. <laughs> it, if the only way to beat Ajax is a stone of invincibility, that's just how you got him up the tree. Then if they, if they ignore the stone, which they won't, they'll start thinking about it, but they ignore the stone and they start going, couldn't we do this other thing? You're, you should be going, 
yes, I bet you could do that other thing. That's cool. In fact, I would prefer it if you came up with your own solutions. If, yeah, ignore the stone of incivility. I would rather you came up with your own your own solutions. And I will encourage you and I will kind of shepherd you along. And in fact, my plan for the next video is how to get your players to do what you want them to do <laughs> without them feeling like you did that. Um, so yeah, they got changed. Lavinthrow is perfect. Lavinthrow is a is a head acolyte of the the of this. I almost said of this church, but that would be terrifying. Are you streaming again? Says Elijah. Yes. So does that make sense? Right. The idea is railroading. Railroading isn't. I think people get the wrong idea. People think railroading is, hey, I have an adventure ready. Well, isn't that railroading? That you prepped all this content? Well, well, then I don't know. Then, then you're stuck with the West Marches, right? Um, which is fine if that's what you want. Hello, Moscow. Awesome. Thank you very much for the. I presume those are rubles. How do I personally handle it when the players are given more freedom to play in the sandbox, but flounder without an NPC explicitly telling them what to do? Well, I don't, it, I mean, if it's a sandbox game, Robert, I don't, uh, you know, it's up to the antagonists, which would technically should be called the protagonist, but the, it's up to the antagonist to drive things forward. So the players can be free in the sandbox, but also in the sandbox are the villains who are enacting their foul schemes. And they have agents and, and lieutenants, and they are going to, if the players don't know what to do, the villains are going to prompt them. Thank you for the uh, Euro, Ricardo. Well, what just happened? A lot of people throwing money at me. Legend of Zia. Anything to add to that bit? Yeah, we could probably do a Wang Rod defense. I still see that the Arcadia stream is at 11 a.m., which is only in 20 minutes. So we only have 20 more minutes to talk about this. But I still see people, much like the railroading thing, I still see people using the phrase, that's what my character would do, to sort of condemn the idea of role playing. Because anytime they see somebody saying, I'm, I, you know, this is what my character would do, and that's why I'm doing this. They go, aha, that's that's the Wang Rod defense. And it's like, no, 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 no. Like, we sh you should be thinking about what your character would do. <laughs> you should be thinking about that. Um, saying, this is, I'm, this is what my character would do, is, is that's not bad. That's role-playing. It's when you use that as a defense uh, to be a wanker, that that's that's when it's the Wang Rod defense. Um, so, yeah. It, it, the, thank you, Thomas. It's the, uh, the, that notion of here's the scenario. I have an adventure ready, whatever it is. Here's the scenario. Players, by the way, players tend to like that. My experience is, you know, players like existing in this kind of cloud of uncertainty where they can role play. They don't necessarily know what, what the challenge is, what the adventure is. They're in the inn. They're meeting each other. They're feeling each other out, blimey. And they can interact and role play. And they like that. That gets stale, though, pretty quick. And pretty soon, the players are looking around wondering, what's the adventure? And in all the groups I've ever played with, the players like it when that cloud of we don't really know what the adventure is, but this feels real. If we were real characters in this world, we wouldn't necessarily know what the adventure is. So we get to explore a little bit, talk to other NPCs, talk to the other PCs, get to know each other, and that's cool. But then you've you've got to realize that cloud. You have to you have to take that ambiguity. You have to take that you know um, that electron cloud, and you have to collapse it and say. Here's the back. It's Calarol the Vile walks into the inn, and you're like, they're like, oh, look, it's the adventure. Players like that. Players like knowing, oh, thank God, the adventure's here. So um, when people talk about railroading, and I, I think mostly the reason they say, isn't that railroading, is because they don't really understand what, rail, what counts as railroading. Railroading is the players don't have choices. Uh, it's not just that, because not having choices, you know, choices, I think, are overrated. And that'll probably be part of the video too. It's when the railroading is, this is railroad. Railroading is explicitly when the players come up with a good idea that wasn't on your list and you tell them no. And you don't tell them no because it's a bad idea. You tell them no because it's not on your list. That is a bad reason to say no. If you tell the players Ajax is invincible and can only be beaten by the MacGuffin, and the players come up with a different way to get the MacGuffin than you thought of, or put two and two together and come up with another solution, well, the only reason they can do that is because they're engaging with your world. And that's what you wanted them to do in the first place. So that railroading is when you ignore their good ideas, and you should never do that. It, you know, 
kind of leveraging leveraging um, the player's ideas is what makes it this game fun. If the players only, there's a great phrase uh, I was talking to Matt once uh, via text very early on in our friendship, and I said um, he was he was describing some problem he was having with his players, and I was like, I think that one of the best phrases to describe what we do is dungeon masters don't solve your problems they solve your solutions so when the players and that's very solving your solutions is very closely related to the law of unintended consequences because when the players come up with their own their own ways out they change the conditions of the test they don't accept the no win scenario and they come up with their own solutions usually these things are kind of half-baked because they're happening literally live at the table, right? And the players don't have perfect knowledge of your world and the adventure the way you do. So often they put two and two together and it's up to you to go, um, that will work if, right? Mm -hmm. That'll work if, or that would work, but, and that's super important. And then the players go, oh, he said it would work, right? So you're saying there's a chance. So how do we solve the but part? Blimey. Thank you, Nathan. The Delian Tomb, that's awesome. That's, I think that's one of the more popular starting adventures. Hey, Ash, welcome to the show. I'm glad to see you here. Excuse me while I suck on some goju. Right, so does this make sense, folks? Railroading is not, I have an adventure ready. Railroading is not, there's only one way to solve this. Railroading is ignoring the players when they come up with other solutions. That is a huge sin from my point of view. Players like, first of all, rail, you know, roller coasters are on rails and people seem to like those. So don't be afraid of, I, I've got a plot. <laughs> I've got, that's, that we call that an adventure. I've got a plot ready, <laughs> right? That's not railroading. Railroading is when the players go, hey, but instead of going from A to B to C, could we go from A to four to C? Could we like leave the alphabet behind? You're like, yeah, you could do that. That would be awesome. And if you become, if you accept that as a standard, dungeon mastering becomes a lot more fun. It's, it's, it would be so boring. I don't know if I could do it, by the way. I don't know if I could be a DM if my players never changed the conditions of the test, never came up with their own solutions to problems, only ever did what I or the adventure predicted. That would be enormously boring. The game only becomes fun for me when the players take this stuff. And it comes in a million different ways, by the way. Like for me, when Lars goes... I've got this scroll of Phantasmal Force. Let me look it up. It seems stupid. It's such a... And then he reads what Phantasmal Force could do for the first time in three levels. While this black dragon is flying around about to kill them all. And I have no idea how they're going to get out of this. That's not my job. It's their job. And Lars goes, oh, word? Hey, hey, this spell that I thought was useless is actually super, super powerful. And I'm like, oh, thank God. That's when I get interested is when the players start taking these different pieces of the world or magic items or the character abilities and putting them together in new, unique ways to get themselves out of a jam. That's when I get really excited, you know. Um, anyway. What's the best way to get on James's cool people list? I would say it is to be, be well known as a 5E author. So that's the reason I wanted to hang out with you folks a little bit early. Did I see the post on DD next about passive perception, Robert? Thank you for the $10. Yes. I didn't read it though, um, about how it feels like using passive perception feels like you're deciding exactly what they find or don't. Um, I haven't read, I haven't read it. I should. Who's James? James Intracasso is the managing editor of Arcadia, our monthly Mazagin. Um, Pesto, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. That's a good question. How can you tell the difference between a group of people that need to play more together to become successful versus a table of people that aren't going to work? I think it generally has to do with progress over time. Did we get another bump from issue number two? Yeah. What do you think about No Rail at All, asks Terra Filo. Well, that's a West March's game, and I'm a big fan of those. And I would like to run one of those. Matt, can I check? Yes, yeah, sorry, Tony. 
God, I hate to, I don't create suit. Thank you, Rob Fair. Nathan, wait, wait, Tony, where'd your chat go? Wait, maybe chat, maybe Discord, maybe, uh-oh. Uh-oh, wait, let me see if I can scroll up and find the super chat. Darth Dracula. Greetings, Oklahoma. Oh, I'm not gonna, you're not, you don't need to hear me do that. Any advice on convincing 3.5 grognards to give five of you a try? Yeah, tell them I'm running fifth edition. You wanna play? I'll see you Thursday night. I don't ask people, I tell them. I know that sounds dra draconian, it is, but it's worked for me for nigh on 50 years. I just say, hey, we're playing D&D &D Thursday night. Are you in? I heard a yes, see you there. <laughs> and my coworker's like, oh, well, I guess I'm playing D&D. &D. So if they don't, if they want to play three, you go, that's great. Are you going to run it? Cause I'll play. Tony Matlock, skill challenges. Thank you, Lord Durock. King of the mods, not King of the Rockers. I think Tom Schmuck is King of the Rockers. Although Pete Townsend would have said there weren't mods and rockers. There were mods and filthy old greasers beating up a bunch of teenagers, which is almost certainly more accurate. Skill challenges. What are possible issues I'm not thinking of in running a four pass, four pale, four, four pass, four pale, four pass, four fail. Um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe four failures. Uh, uh, the thing is, I think that having the number of passes equal the number of failures makes it too likely that they're going to win. You want them to have to earn a lot with seven people. You want you, 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 I mean, it, it's, everything's relative. Three failures is just sets a almost like a time, right? Four failures is just more, more forgiving and you're going to need way, way more passes. So four pass, four fail, they're almost certainly going to make it. And that you want, you need nine successes before you get three failures for there to be tension. Because remember the players, the players are in with a skill challenge with a skill challenge. Someday my voice will break and then, uh, then watch out. Um, with the skill challenge, all the players can participate and they get to choose how. It's not, it's not like, okay, it's your turn, you have to act. D&D is balanced around, it's your turn, you have to act now alone. A skill challenge is a group effort. So you need, to re, you need them to accumulate a lot of successes because it's easy for them. The players with the skill challenge are in a lot more control over their own success or failure, right? Uh, so you need, I would say, uh, you know, with seven people, I would say like, you might say 12 successes before three failures. Hello, Rulados. Ooh, ooh. I'm stoked you made it to the stream, Josh. Do I have any organizing principles? Uh, I should be aware of, you should be aware of every 10 day, of using time travel in my campaign. No, I don't think I've ever done it, although I've implied that it's possible and my players, my players are, some of my players are aware that, um, thank you, Beatrice. Some of my players are aware that they can, that there are ways to time travel in my world. Hello, Chili. Chili, bef yeah, um, isn't it, isn't it Chili? This is that, that before the Americans got involved and ruined everything, which kind of our ethos, and if there were to be a thesis statement, I think that might be it, that had this amazing, uh, when they had like, they uh, elected a socialist government and they built this like, this is in the 70s. They built this, they were going to basically have the world's first computer controlled country. And you go look up, it's a super popular on retrofuturism, but it's just a brilliant idea when you go and read about this command center the Chilean government came up with that would collate all this information from across the country, including things like weather and people calling in sick. And they'd be, it was, it's, it's almost like the foundation. It was amazing. And then, and then we came up. Cybersyn, that's it, Diesel Shot. If you're Chilean and you don't know about Cybersyn, you should go look that up because you will be proud of your country and dope shit that you folks tried before some fucking gringos came in and ruined everything. Uh, have I ever run a level 20 plus session, Jack Kent? I don't know that I've ever run one. I think the highest level we've ever gotten. Wait, says Zvax. I'm from Chile. It's cool you know things like that. Bro, I know lots of stuff. More analysis of classic sci-fi. Um, well, we'll see. Let's not be on the bounds of reason. Hello, Midas. Thank you for the 50 bucks. Wow, Midas, you are well named. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, I would say, G. Martin, you can show that. Yeah. 
I remember being very, I remember basically, oh, I think I almost walked out. Oh, that's normally how I get out of movies, actually. I almost got up and left in the middle of one of those, uh, well, the first Harrison Ford, Jack Ryan movie because they made the CIA look like good guys. And I was like, what is this, fantasy? Um, are we going to get into the movie review anytime soon? Kelly who? Uh, I would not say soon. I, it, the world, the future is uncertain. My, my prescience is limited by the by kingdoms and warfare in fact i'm here hanging out with you folks instead of working on kingdoms and warfare and people are mad at me because i'm behind on that um what's my favorite party level to dm for i don't know actually i would say a a anything from first to seventh level is a lot of fun multi-show system i said thank you Robert. i think quirky eclipse thank you it's com it's com 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 flancy that's actually a hard one to thomas harris i love your books thoughts on call of cthulhu I'm not a huge fan of Lovecraft, but, um, so, uh, I assume when you, when you say thoughts on Call of Cthulhu multi-show, you mean the RPG and this comes up every time I stream in the live stream. And I think we're slowly getting the community on board. Um, I don't really have thoughts about RPGs the way people would like me to. I don't get interested in books, uh, RPG books. Um, I'm interested in people and the things that they're excited by. So if I had a friend of mine who was, who said, Hey, I want to run Call of Cthulhu and they were really enthusiastic about it. I would love it. Now I would get super into it. I would get super into it because I want to play in that person's game. This person's my friend and they're excited. Therefore I'm excited. So, at, and that's definitely a stage of life thing at this stage of my life. I don't really care that much about systems or even really settings. I just want friends that are excited to run something. So when my friend Zach talks about running Traveler, I get really excited to play Traveler. I wasn't excited to play Traveler before, but when my friend Zach is like, oh yeah, I'm running old school Traveler, I'm like, oh, I want to play, right? So that's me. Have I checked out Zine Quest? Nope, don't even know what that is. Well, thank you for being an inspiration, Jim. You're an inspiration just to hang out here. Mr. Twisby, thank you for the 750 ISK. I feel like ISK was a... It was a was some kind of science fiction currency and something. You subbed when I was at 3K. That was a long time ago. That's a cool name. Uh, what's that uh, diacritical? I wish Dr. Dr. Crawford were here. Is that a D? It looks like a D, but it's not a D. Is it, a, is it like a th? Gunth? Is it like a th? Is it one of those? Must be something we don't got in English. So it's probably um, a fricative. ISK is the EVE Online currency. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> How does YouTube convert Super Chat currencies to USD? Like this. <laughs> so be careful because it's really distracting for me. Oh, because there aren't, isn't, aren't they, isn't that company that makes EVE Online Icelandic? Or Icelanders? Is this a thematic Q&A? Well, in about, um, we have to stop. This is the end. So I feel like if you were here, um, thank you, John. If you were here 30 minutes ago when I started and we, this was the, I want to talk about the live stream we did on Monday and not the live stream. I we talk about the video I put up on Monday, the running the game video about engaging your players and the reaction to it. And how many people said, you can see this in the comment. How many people said, isn't that railroading? Isn't that railroading? Isn't that railroading? And I like that because it gives me something to react to. Normally the responses I get are either that was awesome. Thanks. Or they're just all over the place. But seeing all these people respond with the same thing that goes, ha ha, I've got something to make a video about. I can answer that question. And it was about railroading and what is railroading and, and why is it bad? Well, railroading is when you ignore your player's ideas and say, no, you are not allowed to invent solutions. You can only use my solutions. That's bad. So what's my version of the Shadowfell? I don't know that I have a version of the Shadowfell. I like the Shadowfell. Uh, so I am going to get, well, Katrin, I don't know how to read a lot. So I have to stop. I have to stop. I have to stop. Otherwise everybody's going to get mad at me and we have to go prepare for the, the real live stream. So I'm going to stop the stream. And the next time you see me, it will be me and James and probably some other wonderful people. And I will be basically collating your questions. It won't be me talking to you. It'll be James and our Arcadia friends talking to you while I sort of passively sit and watch chat and then relay questions. So thank you, Magma Toad. Well, I mean, are you, are they, are you friends or not? You know? All right. Peace out. I'll be back in one minute.